monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. LinkedIn presents. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Nikki Ballou about his book, the Power of Connecting, How to Activate Profitable Relationships by Serving Your Network. Nikki Ballou, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. John Westover, thanks for having me here, man. It's an honor to be here. God bless you, and um, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate that, and it's a pleasure to actually have you back. I think you joined us maybe six to eight months ago. Uh, we had a really great conversation. Today, we're going to extend that conversation, and I thought today we would focus on the topic around your book, The Power of Connecting, How to Activate Profitable Relationships by Serving Your Network. There's a lot there that I really like, uh, so we'll unpack that a little bit and explore how that relates to the modern world of work and the modern uh, context that we find ourselves in. As we get started, I wanted to share Nikki's bio with everybody. Nikki is the number one international best-selling author of the book, excuse me, Finish Line Thinking, How to Think and Win Like a Champion, The Thought Leader's Journey, A Fable of Life, and The Power of Connecting, How to Activate Profitable Relationships by Serving Your Network. He is an in-demand and highly inspirational speaker to corporate audiences I could go on and on, Nikki, but I think I'll pause there. Anything else you would like to highlight or share with the audience by way of your background and personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Well, I'm actually originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. And when I was 11 years old, the Islamic Revolution took place in Iran. And it upended my world, right? Um, My late father, God rest his soul, he could see the writing on the wall that this wasn't going to be a great place for him to raise his Christian family. And so he made a plan and he executed on it. And he got us out of Iran, and he settled us eventually where I now live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Now, when I was 11, I didn't want this to happen. I was mad. I didn't want to leave my friends. I didn't want to leave my home. But looking back, it was the greatest thing my father could have ever done. It was a a spectacular act of, of love for his family because he took us out of tyranny and he brought us to freedom. And that really has been what I've been all about. Ever since, I believe very strongly in freedom. I think we're lucky to be free in the West. And so many people that are born here don't understand how good they have it. You know, so for me, freedom, free expression, free enterprise, they're at the center of my personal and my work and business philosophy. And I am a huge and massive stand for them. And my dad, he was an uplifter of human beings. If you knew him, John, and you were looking for work, he'd make some phone calls and get you a job. Mm -hmm. If you knew him and you were looking to start a business, he'd sit down with you and help get that business started, even get you access to capital. If you knew him and you were looking to buy a car, a house, or an apartment, dad would help you top that up if you didn't quite have enough money. It was that kind of man that Napoleon Billu was. And why was he that kind of man? Well, first of all, he was a devout Christian. He believed that he'd been blessed by God, and it was his duty to share those blessings with other people. But secondly, Most importantly, he did it because he could. He had the financial wherewithal as a successful businessman to be able to be of service to his fellow man and woman. 
And I just wanted to be like my father. You know, I wanted to be somebody who helped people, who uplifted them. And that got me to be in the line of work that I am now because my dad used to always tell me, son, life is all about people. It's not about money. It's people. Even business isn't about money. I was like, what? What are you talking about, dad? I was a kid, right? <laughs> business money. Business, you make money in business. But he goes, no. Business is about solving problems for people. And when you solve problems for people, that's when you earn the right to make a profit. I go, oh, wow. That's pretty cool. And I put together this little IP snapshot. When you solve acute problems for amazing people, you earn the right to make an awesome profit. And that is the purpose of business. Hmm. I'm into yeah. creating IP snapshots and this wonderful little diagram. I think that's a really, really good job. So if someone's listening to this, you're in business, if you're in a workplace culture, your job is to be of service to people. It's not about hitting your numbers. I mean, all of that's important. Don't get me wrong. It's not about, you know, achieving your goals. It's about making a difference for the people around you at your job. And it's about making a difference for the people that your company serves. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that philosophy. And uh, you highlighted the importance of, of freedom, freedom of expression, for example. I've, I've lived and worked uh, in other parts of the world and that's something I've definitely noticed. Uh, there, there's been places uh, where my family has been. Uh, you know, there's one uh, post-Soviet Eastern European country uh, that we were in, and, and we were actually just out, you know, being uh, spectators, tourists, kind of walking around on a weekend, and we were taking some pictures, and it promptly had bodyguards approach us to take our camera because they didn't want us taking pictures of this particular event. And that that's a silly thing, right? That's a small little thing. Um, but that was the dynamic in this country. Um, and you had to be very careful on what you said, and you couldn't criticize uh, the leadership in the country, etc. That's a big deal. Um, you know, for, for all the challenges we have in the West and we have plenty, um, and I'm, I'm based out of, uh, out of Utah. We have plenty of problems in Utah and plenty of problems in the U S and, um, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but we do live in a place where we can freely express, uh, our ideas, our concerns. Um, and we can, uh, set out to challenge the status quo, challenge the systems that might be, uh, unfair or inequitable, uh, and make a difference for those around us. So like you said, with the example of your father and what you're trying to emulate in your father's example, mm-hmm. we all have that ability. Uh, and, and sometimes that is, that is limited a little bit if you're yeah. in, in certain parts of the world where, where you're really under a microscope uh, and perhaps you just don't have the freedom uh, to, Dude, you to don't. start new ventures, you right? You know, talking about relationships and how building relationships and how that serving your network, building relationships in a meaningful and authentic way, how that can really um, activate profitability. Uh, I think it's an important point. You referred to it a minute ago, you know, with the example of your father, but ultimately, you know, we, we often in business, we talk about making sure that we're staying viable. Of course, that's important. We need to make a profit. We need to have revenue so that we can keep the doors open. We can have employees, we can make payroll, et cetera. Um, but sometimes we get a little bit too focused on the bottom line metric and, you know, of whatever that revenue or profit is. And we forget that if, if we develop the relationships around us, and if we have powerful connections and partnerships and collaborations, that that actually usually leads to greater profits, greater outcomes for the organization. Uh, which ultimately is good for everyone. Uh, and so sometimes it gets posed as like kind of this mutually exclusive kind of decision. Like you either, you know, focus on people or you focus on profits. And the reality is you you can have your cake and eat it too. Like you, if you focus on people and serve those around you and try to help them maximize their potential and do good things, guess what? They're going to make you look good. And and together as a team, you're going to make the organization look good and you're going to innovate and create cool stuff. And people are going to buy that stuff and you're going to make profits um, because you're going to add value to the market. And so it, it's not mutually exclusive and you can have both and ultimately that connection piece and serving your network, like you talk about in your book, I just think is such an important point that I, I think sometimes really gets lost when you're in the daily no, grind of business. Exclusive. People need connections. And, uh, you know, yesterday on my podcast, I interviewed um, 
an exceptional individual. We interview the world's top thought leaders on my show, some of the uh, the most brilliant thinkers. And I interviewed Dr. Joe Wang. Dr. Joe Wang was, um, for many years, a molecular biologist who worked in the arena of vaccines. He worked for Sanofi Pasteur uh, for 10 plus years. He was part of the team that was looking to develop the original SARS uh, vaccine back in 2003, 2004. So, you know, so one of the top three people in the world in his field. And um, he decided to get out of that field and get into the media field when he saw an absolute abuse of the vaccine uh, space by many big pharmaceutical companies to make money because the pressure on them to make money is so huge that they're doing crazy things because he created a, a television network. Uh, he started writing about this first and he quit being a, 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 a virologist, a, a molecular biologist working on vaccines. And he started to work with, um, with media and he created a TV network. And he said this to me, and this, this was brilliant. He said, look, I believe in making money. He said to me, and as do I, he said, but it can't just be about the money. You got to follow your heart. And you got to serve the people. And I just thought, wow, that's so brilliant. You got to follow your heart. You got to serve the people. Nobody's against making money. We're not talking about don't make money. We're saying make money. But you got to follow your heart and serve the people. And in, in the world of, of, of doing business, of building a powerful career, people work with and do business with people they know, like, and trust. So first of all, you got to build connections and relationships. That's the no part, right? That's the no part. You get to know people, they get to know you. That's the no part. And then you got to develop some affinity for each other, things you have in common, things you like about one another. That's the like part, right? And then the trust. You got to be somebody that they can rely on to do what you say. Now, we live in a day and age where doing what you said you were going to do was like, oh, no, nobody does it. I mean, I'm, I told you I was going to do that and I didn't do it. What's the big deal? But it is a big deal. It's a huge deal. It's a massive deal. If you give your word and you go back on it, here's who gets hurt. First and foremost, you. And you go, me. But, you know, I took my word back because I had something else I had to do or I didn't want to do it anywhere or whatever your reason, reasoning behind it was. But hang, your self-confidence and self-trust and self-belief comes from what? From trusting yourself to be somebody who, when you say X, X happens. When you say X, X happens. Now, if I said to you, John, I'm going to meet you tomorrow in Utah for lunch, and we're going to have a business conversation, and I'll be there by 3 o'clock Utah time, mountain time. And you were counting on me to do that. And then when the morning came around, I go, eh, you know, chartering a private jet is going to cost me 20 grand. I don't know if I want to do that anymore. And, yeah, you know, I don't even know if we had a business opportunity there. You know what? I'm going to skip it. Forget it. Hmm. What? Monetizing digital services since 2004. Boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG. Where innovation meets monetization. The first thing I did was I told God, don't trust me. My word is crap. I told myself, don't trust yourself. Your word is crap. So the next time I said, I want to lose weight, I want to make a million dollars, whatever, there's going to be that part of me that goes, oh, yeah, but your word is crap. That's not going to happen. So when you take back your word, you hurt you the worst. Now, you hurt other people because they were counting on you. And, you know, their trust in you goes down. So the level of trust that the world has in you goes down. So that's bad. Right? That's not good. And the level of trust that the world has in the world word of people goes down. That's been happening for a long, long time. But you're adding to that. So that's not good. Right? But what you need to understand first and foremost is that the opposite of that is when you keep your word every time. Your faith in yourself goes up. Your trust in yourself goes up. So when you say you're going to do X, you're going to believe you're going to do X because you did it when it was difficult and inconvenient. And people ask me, well, Nikki, when should I keep my word? And there's people, who go, always, always, yeah, 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 always, sure, 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 for sure, always, right? But you really want to know when you should keep your word? 
when you don't freaking feel like it anymore. When you don't want to. When there's good reasons, in your mind at least, for you not to. It's inconvenient. It's going to cost you money. It's not going to make you as much money as another offer that now came along. That is when you really need to keep your word. Because that is when your faith and trust in yourself skyrockets. That's the word keeping muscle. And that's it's, what integrity is all about, right? Easy to keep your word. No yeah. big deal. Everybody can do that. It's when it's yeah. hard that your character comes through. Yeah. And that that's personal integrity. It's that, tr- it's that, um, that consistency, that integrity that develops the trust and the mutual accountability between people, which is the foundation upon which any relationship is built. If you don't have that kind of trust, uh, then you can't have proactive, positive interactions with other people. I mean, just from a, a simple, like reciprocal kind of uh, exchange argument, let alone, you know, more altruistic, you know, approaches or, or motivations that you might have as you interact with people that you care for. Uh, and so, yeah, let's make sure that we're, we're, we're people of integrity, that we're sticking to our word. Um, that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. Of course we aren't. We're going to mess up. We're going to let people down. Um, things aren't going to, you know, sometimes things happen and, and we have to roll with them because that's the way life is. But people can tell when you're making an effort. And then if you can own up to the mistakes when they happen, just acknowledge it. Don't throw anyone under the bus. Don't gaslight anybody. Just just acknowledge it and, and apologize. Try to make it right and then move on. Um, that goes a really long way. And if we can do the best we can, that's all anyone really hopes for. Uh, you build that trust and and then you can truly have those types of relationships, whether they're personal relationships, whether they're business relationships or whatever, where you can have those meaningful long-term interactions with people to do cool stuff. You're not going to do any cool stuff as an island by yourself. Um, you know, you could, you, to an, to an extent, you, you might be a solopreneur, you might be able to do some, some cool things. I do plenty of things, you know, as a solopreneur, um, but the truly great things that I do are in collaboration with other people. Uh, and, and certainly the energy I get to do what I do comes from other people, not just from me and the insights I get come from other people, not just from me. And so, you know, giving as much as I'm receiving, hopefully, um, you know, I'm putting good karma out there. I'm, I'm, you know, actively serving those around me. I'm trying to help them maximize their potential. Some of that's going to come back my way. And ultimately a rising tide lifts all ships. Everyone is going to benefit when you put that kind of energy out into the world. And when you're helping those around you, (laughs) well, Nikki, this has really been a fun conversation. I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute. Before we wrap up, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, where they can find your books, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Look, if you want to find out about what I do, the best thing to do is to um, listen to my podcasts or buy my books. If you go to Amazon.com and you type in Nikki Billu, N-I-C-K-Y-B-I-L-L-O-U, you'll see every book I've ever written and you'll see both my podcasts. So, I got one podcast called the Thought Leader Revolution podcast, and that is all about showing you as uh, you know, business owner. It's really good for coaches, consultants, uh, other solopreneurs, but it's also good for CEOs to learn how to become a branded thought leader and add a zero or two to their annual income. That's mm-hmm. number one. If you're just interested in learning about um, my thinking around stuff, podcast good place to start. If you like to read, i got nine books that I've published so far. Uh, five of them are business books. There's a children's book. There's a um, uh, a workout book, actually, a health and fitness book I co-wrote with an Olympic gold medalist. And then there's a couple of political and cultural books there as well. So if you're a reader, and I'm definitely a reader myself, I recommend just picking up the Nikki Billu reading list and, and going through that. You might want to start with The Power of Connecting. Here's what that book looks like. Grab a copy of that. But if you're a solopreneur or you're an other business owner, you work in a business, in an organization, and you're interested in uh, taking things to the next level and you want to have a conversation about how that's possible, um, I offer something called a success visioning call. It's absolutely free. You go to my website, ecircleacademy.com forward slash appointment, and you book an appointment with me and we'll take a deep dive into whatever it is that you're dealing with. If you're a solopreneur, 
we do a lot of work with solopreneurs in that regard. If you work inside of a corporation and you want to like grow your own career, we actually have a, a stream that working with uh, folks in there, we've got something called the executive branded thought leader. Um, and it's a really powerful uh, program that we have. And we can certainly have a conversation about how that can be applicable to you and what you're trying to do for yourself and your career and your company. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Nikki. It's truly been a pleasure. I always love having these conversations. I appreciate your insights and your passion. I encourage the audience to reach out, to get connected, find out more about what Nikki can do for you, check out his books. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that they can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.